Welcome back to The Price of Business. I am your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. I'm excited that I get a couple of segments with my good friend, Chris Kidd. He's with Chris Kidd, that's K-I-D-D, dot com. And uh, he is a contributor on The Price of Business, talking about money, uh, money issues. Uh, works a lot in the uh, sports and entertainment arena, but helping a lot of uh, just uh, everyday Americans trying to take their finances to the next level. Uh, Chris, let's just start by uh, let's talking a little bit about uh, what you guys do over there. Um, well, basically teaching people how to get more out of their money. Um, a lot of times uh, we'll run into financial problems and we run out of money before the month runs out. And one thing that I help people do is find money that just seems to disappear Um and, uh, you know, we put to put together a budget that will help them uh, kind of stay on a plan of where they want to be. Uh, I always say uh, every time you spend a dollar, ask yourself, where is this going to put me in? You know, what significance will this have in five years? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, basically, when I was 19, 20 years old, I said, well, I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm 25. And uh, I set that goal. So I, I really got pretty crazy with it and said that uh, I wouldn't spend a dime that didn't come back to me in one form or another. Um, so uh, I I really uh, tightened the belt and everything. I mean, I went to, to really extremes. But, you know, it, it was something that uh, I was able to accomplish by that time too. So uh, that's kind of one thing that I help work with people on. And it's not necessarily to become a millionaire. Uh, if they want to, then fantastic. If they already are, uh, but they want to make sure that they stay a millionaire. That's uh, also uh, another case. But a lot of times I'll uh, we deal with personal finances, entrepreneurship, because I think everybody needs uh, some form of business uh, of their own, whether they are working for someone else or, uh, you know, however their income comes in. They need some kind of a, a business uh, just for tax purposes, if nothing else. And then also um, investing, they uh, a lot of people I run into uh, are kind of investing on the hope strategy. They they uh, buy stuff that their advisor or broker or somebody tells them to buy, and they just kind of hope it works out and not really understanding what's going on with it. And uh, I teach them either if they want to manage their own, that's fine, or if they want to work with uh, an advisor or somebody, uh, at least how they can check back up on what their money is doing and understand, well, okay, maybe my money's not in the right spot or, Hey, uh, my advisor just brought me this idea. Now I can actually look into it and decide whether I really do like it or not. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, uh, what is the, um, that's a really interesting uh, panoramic overview and people should definitely have an advisor when it comes to their money. If they have significant enough money, they should have some kind of level of advisor. Yeah. I, I think that it's, Great, uh, I mean, you know, if if you want to uh, look at the Bible, it says there's safety and a multitude of counselors. So it's it's good to have people around you who are experts in certain fields. And even if you uh, are a great investor, a lot of times, especially if you have businesses or other things going on, um, you know, you may not be able to look up everything and to find all the you know the best deals on your own. But if you have an advisor who's really good, they can bring you the ideas, but you have to be able to understand how to read through those and really understand how they work and uh, where the money's coming from. Is it a good, legitimate investment? Uh, And if not, maybe it's something to walk away from, or it may be something that uh, you look at and say, yeah, this is fantastic. I'm glad you found this. Thank you very much. And I know enough to, to act on it. Yeah, no question about it. All right, uh, with the fact that uh, one of the things you and I also like to talk about what's happening in the sporting arena, you know, and so that's always a lot of fun. And uh, you're my, my partner in crime when it comes to that. Um, I don't know if you and I had a chance to talk about what happened with the Final Four and what ended up happening in the end. That was kind of shocking. Yeah, that was. Uh, I actually thought it was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, you like underdogs uh, figuring it out at the end. Yeah, and and you know uh, we had uh, Ricky Winslow on uh, earlier uh, this past year, and uh, his son uh, Justice plays for Duke. So, and actually, we're uh, planning on having him in the studio this summer. Um, 
so I was kind of pulling for Duke. Uh, just I had a slight bias because of that, and um, I, I really liked Wisconsin though too. And that one I did not see coming. I thought that Duke had the tools to possibly get there, uh, but you know there were a lot of great teams. Notre Dame was a great team this year, and they beat that Duke. was shocking to me. They beat Duke twice this year. Um, it, but Kentucky, that was one they had so much talent um, on that team. It was hard to not see them making it to the championship, and that's one of those things that you actually see a lot of in sports and in life. Uh, somebody who's equipped with all the talent in the world, and there's no way, <clears throat> uh, you when you put it on paper, there's no way anybody else could match up against them. Right, but. Uh, the the teams that play better together, the the real teams working together uh, can beat those teams. So, the old on any given Sunday, right? On any given day, on any given day in sports. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, this has Appalachian uh, Appalachian State versus Michigan. There you go. That was one of the greatest <laughs> upsets I've ever seen oh in my, my life. God. And you know what? Uh, <laughs> Michigan's never been the same since 2007. It's generally been in in decline. Meanwhile, Appalachian State went from a Division I AA <laughs> school to a Division I school that continues to uh, grow, of course, in a very weak conference. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it was an incredible uh, devastation to Michigan. And I, I think that you could say the turning point for both teams was that particular game. The first game of the season, 2007. I like what uh, uh, Dat Wynn uh, says. Uh, he's a, for those who remember, he's a ex uh Cowboys linebacker who was phenomenal, and uh, he played uh, for the Texas Aggies. And uh, he also played at Rockport, which we played against when I was in high school. So uh, that's that's kind of cool. But uh, one of the, the things that he said before was, uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Uh, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, going to wrap it up with that, but we're going to have more of you here coming up. And that's Chris Kidd, chriskidd.com. I'm Kevin Price. We want to remind you best content here. Shows up over there at usatoreview.com and keep listening to The Price of Business. I'll buy you a diamond ring, my friend, if it makes you feel all right.